A very good afternoon and welcome to the session on the topic hysteroscopy, purpose, procedure and recovery by Dr. Maitri Sharan. We welcome you, ma'am. Uh, our doctor is from Apollo Cradles and Children's Hospital, Jubilee Hills. I request you all to pay attention to the topic as it's one of the most important topics. And also, if you have any doubts, any queries, post that on the comment chat box and our doctor will take all your questions by the last of the session. Now it's your time. Doctor, you can take over. Hi, hi. Uh, good afternoon. So let us start. Come to the topic. Uh, what is hysteroscopy? Okay, it's a procedure where you can send a telescope inside the uterus and we can through the cervix and we can visualize what is happening inside the uterus. Basically, the word itself has hysteroscopy. Hystero is nothing but uterus and scopy is like we are using the scope to see the inside of the uterus. So, uh, you can see there is a telescope which we can insert inside the uterus and this is attached to the screen which we can see through the screen and we can operate. Next slide. So, there are two types of hysteroscopies. Uh, one is a diagnostic hysteroscopy. Can you please change the slide? Diagnostic hysteroscopy and second one is a uh, uh, operative hysteroscopy. Diagnostic hysteroscopy is basically is used is used to see what is happening inside the uterus, and we actually use the diagnostic hysteroscopy to find out uh, what is happening and also um, to see any other. Uh, um, related inside the uterus like polyps, fibroids, whatever. Basically, we can see and treat. That's the main thing. Coming to the operative, uh, whatever we see in the diagnostic, we have a chance to remove at the same time. So that's the importance. Coming to that, uh, there are type when we see the diagnostic and hysteroscopy, as I said, to make the diagnosis of the symptom and also it identifies the structural irregularities in the uterus that I said like which is causing the abnormal uterine bleeding. When it is coming to the operative, it treats whatever I said, right? When we see the diagnostic uh, thing, we can change, we can see through our eyes through the screen and we can remove that whatever we can see. So, that, that's the advantage of the hysteroscopy. When it comes to the uh, normal DNCs and other procedures, in that procedures, we can die. There is a blind procedure. But in hysteroscopy, we have advantage of see and treat thing. So the question is, who should get this hysteroscopy? That is like, why should I need the hysteroscopy? Primarily, it is useful to identify the abnormal bleeding problems. Basically, like abnormal uterine bleeding. There is a lot of patients like coming to us saying they have heavy bleeding past four months, five months. And when we see the lining and again, the lining shows the thickened uh, endometrium. So these cases, when we suspect polyps or what is happening inside the lining, it's a best procedure which we can go inside and see what is causing the abnormal bleeding problems and also it is useful for the heavy bleeding and irregular spotting between the periods. Some patients complain that they have spotting in between the periods. So in that case also hysteroscopy helps a lot and even the postmenopausal bleeding after the menopause like uh, once they reach the menopause usually we don't see any bleeding but in those cases we can see the uh, what is a cause which is causing the postmenopausal bleeding and the, as I said the advantage is it is used to diagnose and also correct the following uterine conditions so next slide so coming to the what we can see through the scope that is like as I said we can see the polyps uh, uh, you can see in the screen, this is a uterine polyp. As I said, we go through the cervix and we visualize inside the uterus cavity. And here, by keeping the scope, I can see there is a polyp. So it is used to find and you can remove by there itself the tissue and uh, any other structure, not only the polyps, if there are fibroids inside the uterus also, we can diagnose and we can remove on one sitting. And when you remove the polyp, it is called hysteroscopic polypectomy. When it is uh, uh, when we are removing a uh, uh, fibroid, it is called uh, hysteroscopic myomectomy. So like that, uh, the advantage is we have multiple things to do with the hysteroscopy. Um, 
like that other things like asherman syndrome when it is what is asherman syndrome it is like intrauterine adhesions you can see there are some white bands inside the uterine cavity this usually occurs like post procedures like a, a dilatation and curettage if they have a history previously or any other things which is causing inside the uterine adhesions and these adhesions sometimes result in the amenorrhea that is like there's no periods patient may complain with no periods for long time or some patients have infertility issues now even hysteroscopy helps for those reasons like we can if they have uh, uh amenorrhea for so long time and if is or if we suspect any adhesions post dnc or anything even these cases we can use a hysteroscopy and uh, we can uh, find out whether the adhesions are there and the advantages we can remove them coming to the uterine septums like this there are septums inside which are called mullerian anomalies like inside the uterus some people may have the malformations or the defects inside the uterus like there are multiple septums uh, in uh, types of septums in the uterine cavity so in that case also you can detect here and you can remove the septum in one go so it is very advantageous because uh, it's not only helps to visualize the problem but also it helps to treat the problem that's the advantage of the hysteroscopy uh coming to the other things like not only we disc we it can also be used for other reasons like when there is a trapped iud's like intrauterine devices missed intrauterine or if you have missed a uh, trapped intrauterine device or those related problems also we can use the hysteroscopy we can visualize it and we can remove easily and also uh, in conditions like uh, repeated miscarriages or fertility problems we can find out what is the reason causing fertility problems and we can treat there itself and also in some conditions where there is a removal of remnant placental tissue post delivery in some cases we can if they have complaining continuous heavy bleeding and post delivery and, and if it diagnosed there is some placental tissue left over even those cases we can go and do the remove the placental tissue and also in the routine products of conception even after the removal of the surgical uh, methods and with the using of the scan sometimes there are trapped um, uh, products so in those case also hysteroscopy is beneficial and uh, other thing is like many ask like when we have to perform this that is like best time to perform the hysteroscopy it's always if you are like if you want to diagnose the problem it's always uh, better uh, just after the menses because the lining will be thin and it is uh, very clear to see inside the cavity but uh, in some cases if you are having continuous bleeding and if your endometrial lining is thick you can go for this procedure any time coming to the postmenopausal women complaining of the postmenopausal bleeding and here also you can remove the Uh, you can do any time there is no thing like you have to do only in the cases where uh, possible we can do best time is uh, post uh, periods we usually recommend but if the patient is bleeding heavily and we want to diagnose it's always better to go and remove the uh, uh, you can do any time the uh, procedures so that's the advantage of the hysteroscopy you can uh, see and visualize instead of going for the blind procedures it has lot of lot of advantages coming to compare to the blind procedures and we have uh, uh, all these new things and we have to know and we have to utilize this because uh, there are so many case discussions like just not normal just it's it also helps to uh, save the uterus in many ways because many of the patients complain like they have bleeding and it is not reducing with the medical management and instead of going directly through the hysterectomy is even in the post menopausal we can see and we can remove that and if it is a benign condition still we can once we remove it is a benign condition you still can wait for the procedure so that's the advantage of the hysteroscopy and coming to that uh, will i every one problem is like will i have to stay overnight in the hospital definitely no because it is considered as a minor surgery and you usually does not require any overnight stay usually what we do is we ask the patient we give pre op uh, checklist and before uh, the patient when the patient comes we take a detailed history about the patient and 
we are we examine the patient by pelvic examination and we do the scan and we confirm our findings and our pelvic uh, examination findings with the scan and uh, we counsel the patient like what we want to do and the patient once they are fine we uh, do the pre anesthetic checkup uh, all this happens before and everything is fine we give pre op instructions and uh, we usually admit in the morning uh, like nil per oral in the morning and we finish by within 2 3 hours and after that the patient will be uh, observing for the 4 5 hours and the patient can be discharged but on the same day so it is considered as a day care minor procedure and you don't require any other stay in the hospital so no need to worry you can admit on the same day and you can uh, discharge on the same day what are the benefits of the hysteroscopy it can allow your surgeon to diagnose and the treat from this uh, first slide i'm saying it not only allows to diagnose and also helps to treat the conditions with a single surgery it doesn't require multiple uh, sittings or anything you, if you see something you can treat immediately it enable also it's a most uh, i told as it's a more uh, minimally invasive surgery and it is very precise what we can do is the important locate it also helps to locate the abnormalities and remove them without damaging the surrounding tissue and instead of scraping and causing pre uh, next time intrauterine adhesions uh, it's always better to see and treat and without damaging the uh, surrounding tissues okay and uh, do we need some patients ask like how safe is hysteroscope yeah it is a safest procedure but for any surgical procedure we explain the complications like pros and cons for any surgery when it comes to the hysteroscopy it is less than 1% what are the complication you expect infection it's very rare because uh, we do under aseptic precautions and we give antibiotic to the patient before the surgery but still there is a less than 1% chances of infection and reactions to anesthesia for everyone it is a normal and some people have reactions to anesthesia which we also explain before the consent we take and reaction to the substances used to expand the uterus as i said we keep the uh, we send a scope inside and we keep, it has a light and it is attached to the screen where we see inside and the same time to expand the uterus we use uh, some substances like uh, normal saline glycine and all these may cause sometime re uh, reactions or if we use more there are some things which causes problems re related to this this is also less than 1% and injury to your cervix uterus bowel and bladder for any surgery uh, there are complication but when it comes to the hysteroscopy which is less than 1% and when the scope is very small even that is also very less how long does it take to recover from the hysteroscopy it's always uh, your recovery depends on how extensive your procedure was like uh, if you are doing um, only diagnostic it's only just 10 to 15 minutes procedure when it is coming to the uh, operative procedure like septoplasty when we are doing septum resection or if you are doing any other procedure extensive procedure you may require time for the inside the uterus to recover but uh, usually you can go back to work next day itself if it is a diagnostic or a small minor procedure and and you can go back home that day itself and you can go back to work next day itself so it doesn't require much stay in the hospital and you don't require to take much leaves for this procedure and coming to the is it painful this procedure everyone ask like nothing to worry about the pain because the pain depends on person to person uh it is not always for this a person uh, it it is not same for everyone it usually changes for person to person because when you have anxious about the treatment or anything the pain perception always increases so that's the reason i always the counseling is very important the patient should understand what we are going to do in the procedure what exactly we are expecting and what you can expect from this procedure when we counsel the anxious uh, thing i think you can reduce most of the time and the patient feel feel more better with that and the pain perception also reduced and these procedures usually can be done by the uh day care procedure sometimes without anesthesia in some cases but uh, here we do with the general anesthesia so the pain usually cannot be felt only the thing is post procedure also minimal pain which can be managed with the normal painkillers and next day you don't require any other painkiller also
so uh, coming to that pain i say it's all like person to person so um, so what else you can do with the hysteroscopy like i said like multiple things which we can diagnose and i have a lot of patients which we could save the uterus and uh, we can uh, usually do hysteroscopy and we go with multiple procedure once we see the hysteroscopy and if there is any polyp or fibroid we can remove itself and if the endometrial lining is thick then you can do the endometrial biopsy or uh, dilatation and cure attach and send the tissue to the um, biopsy and know what is happening and sometimes we can use the marina immediately the post hysterectomy after sending the biopsy and on one day procedure on the same sitting you can keep the marina insertion and in most of the cases you will understand what you see in the uterus inside is that it's normal or it is a uh, not benign or you can understand with the findings and you can go ahead with the further thing so many of them ask like is the dnc the same as a hysteroscopy no definitely no the it's a dnc is nothing but dilatation and curettage in that it is a blind procedure here we are not seeing the um what is happening inside if you if your dnc is also take care here if you are doing blind dnc you are just keeping the uh, dilatation and curing surgical instrument and just scraping gentle scraping you do but when you do hysteroscopy you visualize inside the uterus and then along with the hysteroscopy you can do the dilatation and cure attach and remove the uh, lining of the uterus so these two are two different procedures but uh, you can do dnc along with the hysteroscopy but definitely this is the common question everyone asks so i have mentioned this these two are different but it has two different purposes but we can mix this two along with the hysteroscopy so that's the thing like uh, hysteroscopy is a gold standard technique to uh, detect the problem and also to treat the problem for many bleeding problems uh, i can say multiple cases like uh, recently there is uh, 47 years she came with a postmenopausal bleeding actually she don't postmenopausal bleeding when the endometrium is a uh, 8 mm then uh, we have done the scan and we confirm that it is 8 mm and we We have done the hysteroscopy, and there is a small polyp which we have removed, and it came as benign. In this case, there is no need to remove the uterus because benign polyps are safe, and they doesn't change to cancer. And this, not all the um, cases need to be done with the hysterectomy. And there is another patient which at forty seven years went to general checkup, and she find out uh, in that general checkup without any symptoms, she found that. her endometrial lining is 12 mm in the his, in the postmenopausal period and she has come to me and we did the scan but she doesn't show the symptoms and we are advised for her diagnostic hysteroscopy and we in we saw the uh, inside the uterus we were shocked there is a growth or like a polyp type from the fundus of the uterus in this case also we rem we could remove entire uh, growth of the polyp and uh, we waited for the results and it came as fibroid polyp so in this case also there is no need to remove the uh, uterus in most and there is another case like the patient has come with a continuous bleeding past 6 months she is 33 years old and still the lining is showing thick in this case also we went uh, The, with the procedure and she is nally paras woman and instead of going blind dnc we have done with the hysteroscopy and we have visualized multiple polyps and the polyps has come when the biopsy has come as a just a hormonal thing and it is a benign so all these cases uh, instead of going for the medical management at the blind procedure it's always better or uh, to see and treat and you can save the uterus and also you can uh, know the root cause of the problem with the hysteroscopy so definitely we have something advanced techniques uh, so i encourage everyone if you have any other problem or any other things uh, bleeding issues please uh, meet your doctor and find out uh, what is your uh, root problem and if uh, there is a chance if the doctor has given the chance of for you about hysteroscopy please go for it and you you can do multiple things with the hysteroscopy in one go and you can save your uterus most of the time thank you i think there are no questions so that we will end this session thank you so much